So guys, we're back. That's, this is the Mindcast. My camera's over there. Mindcast, I'm here with Tim today. Father of two beautiful kids. Um, husband of a beautiful woman. Entrepreneur. A farmer. What else can I say? Introdu introduce yourself, Tim. <laughs> Thanks, Bruno. Who yeah. are you? Who am I? Well, you know, just loving doing business, mate. Like a uh, entrepreneur, running three companies, soon to be four, a beautiful family, living life now, not just doing life. Great journey together with you the last year and a half. And just like, yeah, it's, it's a good time to be alive. It really if, is. If you guys don't know, he said about a journey that with me, he started training with me. One year ago, right? One year ago, it's been amazing. And I was just talking to a guy, uh, the guy that is building this gym next door. Yeah. What's his name? The guy, oh, Greg. Greg, and yeah. he was like, bro, Tim is looking jacked up and stuff. <laughs> I'm like, man, now he's he's actually consistent. But explain about this journey. What do you mean this journey with me? Yeah. Try, man, try like, to explain So, what's happening. Like, when I was oh, about 10 years ago, so like mid-30s now, so 10 years ago, I was like on the tools, doing carpentry, really physical, worked on the oil rigs. Very active. Uh, very active, like massive days on the oil rigs, like 18-hour days, three weeks straight. And then coming back and then doing more like construction supervising or less active roles within construction. And more then mental More stuff. mental, right? And I say to the boys, like, I've got a six-pack up here. I'm working on the one physically. So <laughs> mentally, it's it's always there. But then um, I got to a point where running all these companies and I've known Greg that, um, that you were talking about for a number of years now. He's actually a really, really close friend of mine, excellent business operator. And I was saying to him, it's like, sometimes I just feel like I'm doing life, mm. but I'm not actually living life. Well, and explain that feeling. What do you mean about doing life and not leaving? Wake up early, go to work, do the grind, same grind, things, grind, 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 do the same thing, make a bit of money, come back, try, tired, try and manage your life, tired, um, fatigued, like about one o'clock, crashed out. You know, Family no, time, no good. Yeah, well, it wasn't present. It wasn't present. I think thinking being, about work, thinking why, about why work, you you got no balance, got no mental stability. Um, and by mental stability, it's more like like mental capacity to like, I've just made all these decisions and talked how, all how day. How long have you lived like that for, you reckon? For the first six years of business, I reckon. First six years of yeah. business? After you got out of the tools? Yeah, so when I started um, Kai Construct, which is one of my main companies, mm. in construction company, uh, that was like, we just had um, our first son, Kai, Lauren and I. And so we started a family Your first son. and a business. Yeah, wow. first son, yeah. And so that was a massive time push for both of us. And for me personally, everything else went out the window. Do you think for a man to become a real man, he needs responsibilities, which is son and a, a wife, kids, yeah. and a business? You reckon you, you became I think like someone. you start leveling up when you level your requirement up. for getting things done and doing them well, which is a discipline all in itself. When you have more responsibility and discipline that's required, it's you have to push yourself to, to grow more. I think like the whole entire thing of just doing life. Especially when you have someone at home waiting for you. A hundred percent. Creating expectations. But you want to give your best in both worlds. And at the start of the first business in construction, it was a lot of time spent building that business and then your personal um i guess your personal disciplines and how you look after yourself is less because you're trying to look after your family and you just want to make the business work as an entrepreneur because all you're doing as an entrepreneur and it's a very widely used term is just you're just accepting the massive amount of risk starting a business and hoping that you're going to get the most of the rewards if it works. So my drive initially was, I'm going to make this work. I love construction. I love real estate. I love property and developments. That's what I'm passionate about. That's what Lauren's passionate about too on the real estate development front. And so our thing was when you're pushing all of that, all your personal stuff gets put to the side. I wasn't eating right. And so sleeping, sleeping, you know, half, half, because you're always thinking about the business. No and then you realize presence. that your, your uh, performance goes down. Yeah. As the time goes past, right? Yeah, man. I think there was one... 
Because you neglect all that stuff. You neglect it. For so a long time. The first thing that anybody and everyone can relate to this, the first thing that actually deteriorates when you have something that you want to work towards are three things. It's, you know, exercise. Exercise. Healthy food and sleep. Now it's your pro- priority. Now it's now. my absolute priority because there's Cause simple- it's changed the game, right? Yeah, there's simple things to achieve, right? But- it but sounds simple, but to achieve them consistently it's not is easy. really hard. Yeah, it's simple, but it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. So those three things I neglected for a long, long time and just like worked on the energy. So when I'm crashing out at 1 p.m. after a big day and I still got half day to Relying go on coffee. Relying on coffee, caffeine, um, like crappy food because you're like, you're rushed so you don't have any time. And you to think do. it doesn't really matter that much, but in the long run, man. Yeah, because I'm young, I'm going to start this business, it'll be fine. Just push, 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 push. Push, 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 get a McDonald's on the way. Yeah, 100%. Drive through, it's super easy. I'll get the healthy version of that. And the reality is, you know, after learning all this stuff with food and time and all the rest of it, there is no healthy option <laughs> driving through. you got to get to it's a It's very point. hard. Very hard, right? So it's that better was the not main eating. thing. Um, what time is it right now? Uh, 10 past. 10 past. I haven't eaten since um, Tuesday last, Tuesday, um, Tuesday night. So 30, 36 That's hours. That's a solid fast. Right now. Yeah. So it's better not eating yeah. than eating all that crap stuff. That was one of the first things when we started training. So like that's, that's my... That was the starting point when we first started training together was like tapped out on all resources, didn't prioritize exercise, healthy food or sleep. I was trying to get this balance running two companies at that point. And I was like, I remember the first workout and you like hop on the road. It was like 5 a.m. It was four degrees. It was one of the coldest mornings. Greg was just up the road uh, from it, his, his warehouse. And so it's all sort of you saw the, You saw him that day as well? Yeah, I saw him straight afterwards. Straight afterwards, like fucked up. Yeah, and he was like, what are you doing? He's like, I don't know, man, but it doesn't feel good. I'm sore. I'm about to throw up. Can I use your bathroom? And, <laughs> and then the you, rest of oh, it. true. You went there. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you realize you're so weak. Yeah, and so what I've, um, it was actually quite a um, an eye-opening experience because like I felt mentally fully capable but when you, but then when it. you actually, when the rubber hits the road and you're like hop on the rower, and you're like do fuck. a burpee, throw this kettlebell, push it all up. Like I just think back to that first morning and then the first month of just feeling completely incapable physically from what I remember doing, working three weeks straight in oil rig going, I could like, used to kind of call us universal soldiers because we just didn't stop our whole entire crew. And so that, but when you step out of that consistency and then you go back into it, you realize how little so that first workout made you think yeah like after you leave the gym you're like you thought about well the first workout was i thought about like i don't want to do that again i don't want to do that again <laughs> because it's this and mental shock back. yeah wow yeah and then here we are one year after that one year later i think one we worked later. out three times a week consistency consistently people and now how how is that people like be noticing that you change yeah and how, what what's the difference what do you feel after like being now prioritizing your health, all that stuff, this time that you have for yourself first thing in the morning, what has changed? Like, I think the biggest thing, having time for yourself in the morning. It's something that you're ready. Yeah, and that's why... You feel good about yourself. Definitely. And starting like working off with a couple of guys consistently and then just doing one-on-one together in the morning. That is my sacred time where I don't even bring my phone into the gym. Like, you know this. Nah. It's like solid for that focus. hour, it's a solid focus of just like getting there get it done and some mornings i wake up leaving the farm at like just after 3 a.m going i actually don't really want to go you know all this like self-talk and doubt so explain you leave how how far you live from the gym so i live uh, yeah an hour and 20 minutes from the gym from the gym yeah in the farm so he wakes up at three three yeah cold as hell drive one hour to the gym to work out yeah and he's that it has changed his life. Definitely. And now, what do you feel like? What was the changes that, that you felt? What, uh, what do you felt? The biggest thing the is... The biggest thing. Knowing that there's more discipline. More discipline. So you feel more confident? Feel more confident. Like the self-worth of how you look at yourself in the mirror. We talked about this last week. So like people look at the mirror, but they don't look at themselves. Like they Some don't really don't want to look at, at themselves because uh-huh. they go, oh, I really should be doing something about it. 100%, right? Bro, some people wash their face in the bathroom and they don't look at themselves. Yeah. 
And so now it's like, I'm He's actually quite happy about himself. looking at myself. Like, you know, cause like, okay, I'm actual, like I'm fit, I'm healthy. I feel super capable. Uh, we did Spartan together. That was a good mental thing. Um, mental note, don't bring your training to Spartan. <laughs> You would just bring me. No, I definitely bring you. Or like, oh, bring Bruno. I'll see how it go. And you're just like doing laps back and forth with the whole entire team. That's what I was saying in that in that race. We went to this race. It's like 25 k's. Yeah, it's 25 k's. 25 obstacles. Yeah. And I realized that day that the fitter you are, the more you're gonna enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. You're less like, struggling. You're not struggling as much. So you enjoy. You're watching. You're seeing everything. You're laughing. Hundred percent. I was gassing out on like eight k's, <laughs> and you got you just running up and down, running like, up hey, and down. Hey, it's gonna be good. Let's keep going. Enjoy, enjoy it, enjoy and it. I take energy from other people as well. Yeah, you you can do that. We can like, oh, see this guy. We take energy from him. The interesting part about that race, because the whole entire like carpentry team that came along, they're re really good at stamina and physical component. And I know it's stamina that something we've been working on is my actual stamina, but the the physical component. You get to the obstacle and they're all standing there having a bit of a rest waiting because of the team thing. And then I'm like, well, I didn't actually get any rest the whole entire race because I was slow running. But when we got to each obstacle, it was just like, get the obstacle done or carry a 50 kilo ball. And you got it done. And it got it done. And the I was actually was resting. The, run, right? the hardest part was I was actually resting On the when you and I were carrying sandbags, those that kilometre. I'm like, oh, this is a rest period because the I run felt was like the so hardest. much more strong. Mm. Yeah, the run was the hardest part. But it was good. And finishing that, at the end, I was like, man, a year ago. Bro, imagine a year ago. Like, you remember me the first day of training. Like, it was just, I was about to vomit and pass out mm. on the floor. And it was in one minute. And you're like, another 45 minutes to go. I'm like, man, this is... But now, it's so much more, I guess, enjoyable to now live life. Everyone's like, why would you do the Spartan race? Like, why not? Like, I finishing it. It's now, okay, I've got this another baseline that's been set a little bit higher. And now I know, okay, I can now do you know that. you're capable of more. Exactly right. And the more you do it, the, the, the more confident you become. It builds grit. It builds resilience. Mm -hmm. You know who you are. 100%. Wow, I can do more. Yep. Let's raise the bar. Let's yep. raise the standard. And that's all from just committing consistently you push through, to man. physical exercise. You push through that pain. And so that flows on from Thank everything else. Thank you for else. pushing through that pain, man. Thanks, man. Since from the beginning. Yeah, man. I know that was hard. I see you, man. That was very hard in the beginning. And it is. It's meant to be hard. Mm. But you know what? We do it on purpose. We do hard things on purpose. And when the natural things from life come, the hard things, you'll be prepared. Because yeah. you, you torture yourself in the morning, first thing in the morning, every day on purpose. Yeah. When the problems come, you're like, I'm fine. Well, I think I go to the sauna. I torture myself in the sauna. I go to the gym. I torture myself in the gym. 100%. All right, problems comes. All good. And I the best part about that is, like, you've done the hardest part of the day already. First thing in the morning. And the best part is you decided how good to do is it. That? Yeah. Tell me how good is like doing that first thing in the morning. It's oh, a game changer, 100%. right? I, like walking out which is my most funnest part, is going, see you later, Bruno. See, see you later, tomorrow. mate. <laughs> yeah. That's the best time, It's mate. like, it's done. Ah. It's done that. Not saying goodbye to you, but, you know, oh. like, sometimes halfway through, it's like, oh, mate. Bro, this is the uh, Willis Nitro. Thanks, Willis. This is my pre-workout. Natural. That's the cold brew I was telling you. Yeah? Four shots of coffee in here. Crazy. Open it up and try. Oh, well. And then... Let's go to the some questions. Oh, that is delicious. Very good. And it's very strong. Natural pre-workout, nothing else. Even simple things like that. And I have a question for you, actually. Like, we've, we've trained it. and done consistently. Like, the types of training, you've been changing it up with our workout the last month and the results have been fantastic. I've got a question if... I was starting to train again with you is what I wish I asked you earlier. What types of training for people getting into it and realizing just like me that I had to change my life was just doing life, wasn't living it. I didn't have any extra energy to enjoy family, physical activity, anything. Where would you start and what type of exercise would you do? The basic stuff, the same thing as 
same thing as you're doing right now. Very slow. That kind of workout, guys, if you want to change your body, that kind of workout, I realize it's the best, man. Mm. And what's that workout? Like, what's safe. the name? I forget. It's like negative pressure or... Man, it's a, it's a normal workout, let's say lifting weights, but we prioritize the, the eccentric part of the movement and we very slow at the stretch position. Mm. And studies are saying that's where the the growth happens. And it's very safe, those kind of workouts. So you go, you got to go light. There's no ego. We go very light, but we go very controlled and very focused. We're not just there lifting weights. Most of people are just lifting the weight. They're not like actually training the muscle. And it's a kind of meditation as well. So that's one of the best workouts as well. And I realize it's good for beginners, good for advanced. Because you get some big dudes, very advanced. You bring them in. They want to lift very heavy. You know, like, bro, do the technique then. Let's hold for two seconds down the bottom. Very slow. Can't do it. Drop the weight. We've been training ego. So that, you can't train as heavy. So you got to very go very slow. And it's very safety. Safety, is that how I say Yeah, very safe. Safe. Because it's very slow and control where you're most vulnerable, which is like where you stretch your muscles. That's mm. where the, you're most vulnerable because you can tear. So what we prioritize, it's going very slow at the eccentric movement. We stop, stretch, and come back. When it's heavy, you can't do that. You just like, and that's when you, you tear your muscle. Right. Makes sense. So we're very safe, very effective, and you got to be in the moment. It's amazing, that kind of workout. I will agree 100%. 100%. You have to be in the moment. Because we were doing like high intensity, um, heavy weights, which I feel was good at the start. And lots of like rowing, running, rope like, like, work. It's good for kettlebells, the... Kettlebells, weight the, balls. It was good. It's good to actually get the cardio. And I think I needed that. And you knew that like when you would, when you saw... for the men. Remember, we were like screaming, like lifting very heavy. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. As well, we have got to have that, but it's not as effective. Mm. You can go lighter, less risk. Yeah. And more. If, what would you rec- What would you do? I think the last month in particular, best, or just best. You've been enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. I think I shredded like three kilos and gained more. And mass. what What is the best part of the training session? Like this last couple couple months, what What are you enjoying the most of this kind of training? This, this is a body, proper bodybuilding style. Mm. I think it's the mental it's the mental game. The mental game to stay present. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a couple of times, there's a few exercises that I don't enjoy as much, which you know, so you, we do more of 100%, them. That's the one I love. Yeah, yeah. The and then you're like, you know, like calm your mind. Calm your mind. Like it's your mind. It's, it's meant to it's be hard. It's not your body. It's meant to be hard. Sure. Calm your mind. And I think the biggest thing that discouraged me at the start of training was one feeling super sore two feeling mentally incapable of actually i can't do the technique i don't know how to move my arms exactly even though you're very like one thing i do like you're very descriptive of how you move what joints be careful of this very present very present the whole entire the time whole when we're time. training every rep every and that's rep the counts. difference yeah. of the workout and so like starting that is like you're worried about technique and then breathing and like, that was the first, I remember the first two or three months, you're like, breathe, breathe. Because I just like, there's so much mental stuff going on to like, am I even doing just lifting weights correctly? To now where it's like, okay, well, you build the muscle so that you can actually be able to see mentally and control yeah, and feel it. your muscles. Connect and then, you know, that your, your mind to the muscle. Exactly, mind to the muscle. So your technique grows better. And then the last month specifically, it's now all connected. The breathing the technique, the reps, and I can actually enjoy Like, I've always enjoyed it, but I'm enjoying it even more now to go, okay, now I'm going to be 100% present. And then when you're like, oh, keep your mind calm, because you know, like, sometimes, like, the length of the amount of reps and the amount of things that we do, towards the end, it can be, like, a little bit scattered or my technique drops, and it's purely based on focus. And so that's helped me focus in business. Because if I can wow. focus in the morning, I'm just getting that rep right. Like you said, there's no ego. No, we it's go. less weight. Very slow, very controlled. Very slow technique and breathing. going to failure. Going to failure. Yeah. People like the world uh, tell us not to fail, mm. and what we're doing there, failing the whole time. We yeah. want to fail. How good is that? It's really and good. it's good because when you fail, I'm like fuck yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, you know what? Because then you gave your all. 
He gave it all. And that's there's growth right there. Yeah. Yeah. So fail, please fail. It's kind of funny. Uh, James, the developer, he was like, I was like to him, please fail, James. And he was like, this is funny, man. You're telling someone very kindly to fail. Always kindly, Bruno. Always kindly. <laughs> Always kindly. You know me. Yeah, yeah. And bro, the word tells you the opposite. Mm. Don't fail. You're going to be embarrassed. Bro, it's the opposite. Fail. There's growth right there. Yeah. Very close to fail. There's growth. I think the this point of growth. The thing too, though, is people don't like to fail. Don't like to fail. Because, because they painful. also don't like feeling vulnerable. Don't, whether to themselves or other people. Mm. I've experienced this personally. 100%. Um, but now, like, when you're fully, like, happy within yourself, which is always a constant battle, but also confident in who you are as an individual, knowing that you're giving your best, you're okay to fail. Like, you know what? I gave it 100%. I didn't leave anything else Bro, in the tank. Less ego. Mm. And then you're like, yeah, cool, mm. do them. And then you're like, oh, you know, someone's like, oh, you can only lift this. You can only do mm. this plus 10% of your body weight. I'm like, yeah, man, but I can do it extremely well. My technique's there. And I'm happy with that. And I'm just fighting against myself. And when I started training, I was worried about what everyone else was thinking, like being brutally honest, like, oh, man, we should do this, self-conscious or... 100%. It's the, I, I realized the last two months, we start to getting more, you start to get more relaxed when you take your shirt off and you're like confident. I love that, man. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And it's, it's very good. But I, yeah, I can see that. And thank you for sharing that, man. Thank you for sharing your... How do I say vulnerability? Vulnerability, yeah. Vulnerability. Mate, if I try to say that in Portuguese, yeah. I'll be... <laughs> Vulnerabilidade. <laughs> yeah, oh, there you go. Hey. It's Some, very similar, something. actually. Vulnerabilidade. But I have a question for you, too, because yes, this is something... Um, so when you're training, mm. this is something we, you and I talked about three months ago, which is which changed dramatically how, how much um, capacity I had to train together. Mm. Food. Food. So... When I first started training, we didn't touch too much on this point because we were just working, getting through the motions of it. <laughs> we're getting the, the foundation. We're just getting the foundation of like just solid, get a consistent getting, habit going. Uh-huh. But then um, you noticed that I didn't have as much stamina halfway through towards the end and we started diving in deeper and we worked out how much I was actually eating and you, we all worked out that I was under eating by a third, like two thirds. So I needed to increase three times the amount of input of food. Most of people are doing that. A hundred percent. So can you break that down for me? Because we've seen, I've seen the personal changes and we talked about this even a couple of days ago where I'm eating three times as much food, specific types of food, losing the weight that I was struggling for. And it's not really a lot of weight, but it's just areas that I want to improve on and then gaining more muscle with more food. Can you break that down? Because that was something that blew my mind. It blew, blew my mind as well. Because it's the complete opposite of what, and the fasting component and then the food. Man, your body is so intelligent. So when you don't give food to the, to the body, he's like, this guy, he's not giving me the fuel. What I'm going to do, I'm going to store the little bits that he gave me. And he store as fat. He has to. Because you're not giving him the, what he needs. When you start to give him the food, more food, you put more fuel, the right food. He's like, all right, this guy is feeding me. I don't need to stock anymore. Because there's constantly energy coming. He's like, he's giving. I can burn. I can do it. He doesn't store as much food. So most people do like this. They don't, they're under eating. And under eating is the worst thing you can do. Because you're going to feel fatigue, you're training, your mental... Something went wrong. Please try again. Oh, yeah. This is under eating. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So true. (laughs) Something went wrong. Bro, so under eating is the worst thing. I I did that, man, a lot of times, like cutting calories. You don't need, man. You just need the right food and give the fuel. Give the right quantity of fuel every time so your body uses that. And that's it. You just use that energy and you don't. it doesn't need to stock anything, store anything. When you don't give as much food, he has to store because he's scared of dying. Your body's just protecting you. And he's, he's stock. Is that how I say stock as well? Yeah. Store all that fat, in fat, mm. in body fat. So when you start giving more food, he was like, wow, I have energy now. And then you have more energy on workout. You're more strong. You're stronger. You live heavier. You have more results. Everything changes. It's a compound effect with everything together. So more food, more energy, 
you use more, you have more strength, more results, and then you become a machine. I need 5,000 calories to grow muscle. 5,000. You, I became like that. Yeah. It wasn't that in the beginning. It's slowly building it up. So I beca- you, you can become a machine of yeah. building calories. Yeah. So I, if you know, bro, the amount of food that I eat when I'm, when I'm eating. Yeah. When I when eat, you, I eat. When you're eating. When after I being eat, fasted I, for yeah. three days. Whole so chicken. Yeah. Something like that. Like three kilos of meat. When you think about it, though, that's like the whole type primal. Yeah. You know, a thousand 100%. years ago. That was not long ago. That was happening. That was a daily routine. Whereas daily now routine. it's been so convenient with food. Our lives are busy with technology, business, do this, do that. And that, that We're primal. addicted to food, my friend. Oh, We're not even hungry. Yeah. So I'm 36 hours. I'm not even hungry. Yeah. I can go, especially now that I had this coffee, I can go even more. And I'm focused, dialed in. Fasting is amazing, my friend. You stay present. It's very good. Let's dive in a little bit in, the, in this fasting thing. Why, why am I doing this for? Physical, physical wise, so you drop your sugar, blood sugar levels all the way down, so I have no sugar in my blood right now. Nothing. It's 36 hours. My body's burning fat at the moment because all the glycogen, the carbs inside of the muscle, he's, he already u- utilize it. So you u- utilize all the energy that I had, and now he's burning fat. More, he's re- re- regenerating new cells. Your body is constantly regenerating new cells. But when, when there's no food, it's like a coffee machine cleaning itself with just water, cleaning the pipes. Yeah. In California, they did a study. People with cancer, they brought their chances of dying from the cancer 80%, doing a 48-hour fast once a week. People with bad cancer, 80%. Less. Yeah. Eighty percent chances to die from that cancer. So that's how good fasting is. It cures cancer. You're gonna look younger too, because it's regenerate new cells. There's a whole study about it. People study about fasting and if the whole world do a fasting, a twenty hour fasting, we break the industry of food. All that food in the supermarket. I was just about to say shops. like what happened? Know, we're addicted to food, but it's also it's a commercial commodity now. It's a as system, well. yeah, it's, it's a, a commercial big commodity. ecosystem uh-huh. there. They're relying on... Yep. What happened if everyone stopped eating for 24 hours? 24 hour? What happened, Jim? Well... Something's going to crash. Something will crash. Something will crash. Something will crash. And yeah. they don't want us to, to know that. They don't want us to do... Uh, well, it's gone from whole foods to packet food. And we've seen that over the last five years. Well, I personally have specifically. And we don't... We mainly eat now from co-ops, farmers markets, Bang. things like that. You're on. And, you know, and the difference is... Astronomical, even the the water, the, the water. quality of water. Tell us about the water, man. When you change, bro. When I change the water, my skin differently. Just so much better. Everything clear. My mind, my brain, no main, no mental fogness. So we've been living on the farm for ten years. Ten years now. Ten years. How now. good, man? You're gonna raise so your good. kids. You know, but farm, well, well before when farms was now a nice thing, like a popular thing to have. But oh, now it's the, popular. To now be a farmer. Right, everyone wants to be on yeah, a farm. You know, everyone wants to get out of dodge, sort of thing. So it's good. It's good. But the, so. 40 acre, acre farm, 10 years we've been there. Year two, we put in rainwater, like one massive rainwater, rainwater tank. tank. And there's no pollution there, so the water no, is No, and, and we still, yeah, there's no leaves, no pollution. So he drinks uh, rainwater. How do you call it? Rainwater? Yeah, rainwater, yeah. Like consistently. I don't drink, I don't take rainwater water straight with Straight from the sky, baby. Yeah. Water in the rainwater tank, the we shower in it. We wash our clothes in it. We cook with it. We drink with it. We still filter it. So it's like, oh yeah, yeah, still filter, still it. filtered, just like the sediments and all the rest of it out. UV filter. What's the difference between the rainwater and the water that comes from the ground? Oh, uh, like bore water. Yeah, I mean the spring one is oh, it spring? Natural, spring? natural spring. Yeah, that's beautiful in itself. That's it's got Mother Nature one. filtering as well. So with with that's rain, the one I had in the farm. Yeah, yeah, where I grew up. That's unreal, man. Uh, rainwater is good because you don't have all the processed. Stuff that they have Especially to treat. if there's no pollution in treat that the area. Water in, no pollution in that area. But you still got to like filter it to a point, mm. um, I feel anyway. Mm. Uh, but it's been astronomical. Mm. We didn't get sick for ages or haven't been sick. Our, our baseline of health, we don't have a local doctor or, or a doctor we see regularly. Um, health is completely fine uh, on that front. We feel just so much better for it. And you actually feel hydrated. Sometimes... You're drinking town water or the mains water. water. 
I actually feel sick. It's like I'm drinking spa water because my body's spa. Like, you know, chlorine Not and the water from the spa, mate. Yeah, like from the pool. <laughs> chlorine and fluoride and all the rest of the stuff that gets gotcha. put in it. Because they have to for the amount of area that the um, that uh, travels through the pipes. Heavy but, metals and stuff. Yeah, and just doing that, it's just like, wow. Wow. If your body can tell that difference because you haven't drunk it for that long, when you're constantly drinking one thing, you it becomes normal for you, right? So if I tell if I could give an advice to people that are watching us right now. About diet, first thing, good water and real food, whole foods. Yeah. Single ingredients. That's it. Try it. Try eat a lot of that. You can't. You can't overeating eating pumpkins. Yeah. You can't overeating <laughs> eating chicken. Mm. You can't overeat eating uh, McDonald's, biscuits, whatever that stuff is, sugar. That's when you blow up your calories and you get fat. Yeah. Eating whole foods, you can't. That's why the, when the nutritionists give them a diet, they think it's a lot of food, like you. Yeah. You're like, fuck, this is, I never eat that much. Yeah. And I'm looking better. Yeah. Because, we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. You used to eat sugar, which is this much, and this amount of calories. And the interesting part on that, on the food fasting, from what I've experienced and trained together, I know that our training has gotten higher in intensity for a longer period of time, and I feel less fatigued. I actually feel energized after with it. more food, with more like more food. Still fasting until about twelve. How good o'clock. is that? Tell about the fasting. It's just like full clarity. I get full clarity. Everything done in everything all the companies done. at twelve, and then I basically have all my meetings after that. So, hundred percent sharp, like well and truly a lot sharper on in the morning side of things, especially with you know like lion's mane and um, cortisols and and. Um, all those little yeah, um, tell, natural supplements. I tell people that if you feel sleepy, if you not feel productive, man, fast. Yeah. And go coffee and just water. Yeah. Lot, heaps of water. Yeah. And so now, yeah, it's just whole foods, water, black coffee in moderation. You get a lot of stuff done, right? Got a lot of stuff done. You know what? I'm still 100% alert right up to 5.36 p.m. And I've been up since 3 a.m. So that's like if a you keep doing that, day. you're going to look younger. You already look younger than since you start. Mm. When you start with us, yeah. Well, it's good. You look more handsome now. Well, didn't you tell me that for every single hour you work out, you save a day of your save a day of your life life. and fasting, my friend. Yeah, (sighs) even more, even more. Yeah, even more. That's good. Get some questions for us. That's good. We we're like having a flow, fluid conversation here. Well, it's good. It's interesting because you're like, yeah, I know you're interested in like my day-to-day my life balance and business and all that and we talk about that a lot and at the same time it's like all of that sort of flows into having self-discipline from exercise and making time for yourself those three basic things of exercise healthy food and rest how that sort of goes out the window when you're busy you don't prioritize time for yourself and people think that having time for yourself is really selfish (laughs) it's super self i know your (laughs) i know your perspective on it i'd love to get it too but i feel having time for yourself and being completely selfish for you to have that time to do exercise to stop and have a moment to think people think that just because you're not doing something and you're thinking about something you're wasting time nah. all the biggest achievements and growth and having space to actually process what is going on instead of being consistently reactive with what is coming at you in life to just sit back and think about something and process and make a better decision Every single decision that I've made in my companies that I did not stop and think and reflect and get advice and ask has not been the best outcome of that decision. And as business owners and as entrepreneurs and however you want to label it, you, it is a very lonely Wrong. place to be. Mm. As a leader of a company, when you have a team in lots of different areas and you're relying to get the work done through your team, it can be a very lonely place. So if you don't actually, and by lonely, I mean you can't always reach out to your team for advice or to solve a problem because them and themselves are dealing with what you have asked them to do and they are looking up to you as the leader to make sure that, hey, he's got everything dialed. He's like getting consistency. They can all see that I'm working out. They can see that I'm on point and nothing gets passed anymore. Like I'm across everything because... My mind's like back to being sharp, uh, even sharper than what it was. 
No, you're, with, no, with you're no longer reacting anymore. No longer reacting, right? You're leading. Yeah. So I get to take even time out today to catch up together. How good. And there's so much going on. With confidence. With confidence. But then at the same time, it's like leaders need to learn from other leaders. Yes. Kings need to learn from kings. Remember? Yeah. And so you can't... You don't ask advice. You don't... Yeah, you need to ask advice from people that are leveling up or people that know exactly what you're going through. Greg is a great example. People outside. See, he's at the king of yeah. his kingdom. Yeah. You're the king of your kingdom. Yeah. So you don't... You ask advice from other king. Yeah. In another, from another kingdom. Yeah. He and that applies a in... perspective. Different perspective. Applies to everything. Applies to everything. No malice. It's directly from their experience. They don't have any ego because they're not involved in the situation. Yep. They can see You're it. out of the situation. You're out of the stress. Factually. I think that's really important. And I Really important. It's like my results have excelled because of finding those right people. Mm. And businesses can be challenging, can be like hard in some respect. You got to be able to eat shit. You got to be able to Business for me is okay like losing, it. losing, losing, losing is sporadically winning. Yeah. This is what about entrepreneur it is. Yeah. I, I found, I found that now. I didn't know. Yeah. But now I know what you it is. You got sold the dream of like, and now be I your respect own boss. you. I respect you if you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. you constantly losing, yeah. sporadically winning. Mm. And people that, are, people are not built for that, but who, there's the one that loves it. Loves the fight. Yeah. You love the fight. To be able to run a business. You got to yeah. lo- love the fight. Love the journey. You got to love solving problems. Love be punching on the face, solving problems and eating shit for a long period of time. I remember a long period. I remember too, like month two <laughs> of training, you were like, we're doing planks. You're throwing like weight balls. You're mm. like, you know, like, you know, like just constantly like you. doing like chin ups and this guy's like doing jujitsu, kicking what? that stuff. It's like, you Bro, know, people so like cool. get scared sometimes, yeah. but they get used to it because they know it's from a love. Yeah. It's a tough love that I give. Yeah. People like, some people, it's funny, but some clients come to me and are like, why are you doing that to me? I was like, man, mm. everything that I'm going to do here, it's going to be hard for you. I'm going to make everything harder for you, but you're going to become someone better. I remember vividly. You got to understand that. There was like, to work with me. the squats with a with white ball overhead as well. And every single time we're going up, I'll punch you. You would just and <laughs> punch me or kick me. I didn't know which one it, it was. It's life, bro. He's like, I'm going to teach you technique. It's life and all the rest of it. And I remember like, I don't, you didn't break a rib, but it was like, it was like full bruising Sore. down one side for the week. And Especially I was, with Julio, right? Julio the last bit, crazy <laughs> yeah, guy. He's crazy guy. Julio. So we're doing all of this workout. And I was like, and I left just going, I was actually like every single time I got kicked while I was holding, like, it was a 20 kilo weight ball or something above. And, you were kicking me and I was like, I was just like, the first one was a real shock emotionally to the system. I'm like, why is this guy kicking me? <laughs> What's going on? I'm just trying to lift the ball. And then the second or third rep going through and go, I just like lent into it. Oh right, man, like go your hardest. Like come on, eat it, get it done. And every single time Thank you for accepting the that. week after that was like the mindset was just like you I'd walk up or go to meet him like, oh, you know, like you because it hurt for the rest kicked, of the week, right? I've been kicked in the gut this morning. I'm ready for this. <laughs> You're ready for this. Yeah, exactly right. And it's like, oh, I it can't be that bad because I just went through, you know, so it makes everything that seems like a huge challenge, like minimally an issue. I'm not explaining that really well, but the, the mental mind game of it was, now it's like, like I'm ready for, you know, getting kicked in the side if there's a plan, you know, it is what it is. It's with love. It's like, it's for technology. I don't like do that for fun. I, I know it's fun. I like it. It's fun for mm. me because I grew up like that. In the yeah. environment. Yeah. But it's a tough love, man. Yeah. And it's God gave me this mission to make people stronger, to help people get stronger. It builds help. resilience. Yeah. Build resilience, confidence, it all strength. De- it also depends on um, perception. Perception as well. 100%. See that your first perception wasn't the best. No. I was like, why am I, why am I Perception doing is everything, man. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm going to give you a, a, a thing, a purpose. I think I told you that. The purpose of life. Ah, oh, what is my purpose? People are like, ah, oh, what is my purpose? I have the answer now. For your purpose, for my purpose, for our purpose. Yeah. Your purpose is to be you. Be team. My mm. purpose is to be me. There's no one like you. There's no one like me. So be really good at being you. Don't worry about, ah, oh, I got to find my purpose. Your purpose is to live life. It's to be you. 100%. And there's phases. 
in this phase, you are a farmer, your dad. Soon you're going to be a granddad, but you're gonna, still going to be team. Yeah. So be really good at being you and don't compare yourself to anyone. And real confidence, real confidence is you don't walk into a room and you think you're better than everyone else. Yeah. Real confidence is when you walk into a room and you don't have to prove anyone that you're better than them. If you're really comfortable on your own skin, that's for me is real confident. And people are going to notice that. People do notice it. People do notice yeah. that. When you're trying to be better or you're trying to be bigger, they will notice. And when you put yourself smaller, you just be yourself. Yeah. There's no one like you. You don't have to prove anyone because you know who you are. That's true, truly confidence, real confidence. Definitely. Confidence in yourself. Confidence in yourself. People see that straight away. People see that straight away. And, you know, they treat you differently. Whether or not, like, primarily. They treat you differently. Yeah. When you're in shape, they treat when you differently. When you're different. in shape, I've noticed they treat you differently. Mm. And also, too, they respect you. They respect you. You know, and that's for anybody because it's a primal instinct. Like, hey, that person's looking after themselves. They're disciplined to consistently do a task over and over and over again. They're mentally challenging themselves. And, you know, in my space now if i'm going to do business with another business owner you're going to look for that i'm looking for you're that now look because for you know those. what i've just been through it for yep. the last you're year you're going to look for some muscles there intensely and i'm like so what do you guys like what do you do for yourself is one of my first questions that i ask anyone how's I'm your routine getting into business with or you know doing business that it's like mate what's your routine are what? you looking after yourself because if you're not looking after yourself how can you look after family and secondly how are you going to look after your business that i'm doing business with and so it's a very big direct reflection of, as a business owner, if you've got your stuff together. hundred percent. I was with a multimillionaire in the casino the other day, my party, like a Koloshi party, you know Koloshi? Yeah. And then this multimillionaire, and he was like, eh, see that guy? He came to me, he was like, see that guy smoking the vape? I'll never do business with him. I don't do business with addicted people. Interesting. I was like, whoa, interesting. I'll never do business with them. Because addicted people, they like impulsive. Mm. They can't control themselves. How are we going to do business with them? Ah, that's the discipline component, right? Where are we? Where were we talking about? This is also a little good life ah. lessons, life advice, life lessons. Right? Life, advi life advice, bro. That's very interesting, like a multimillionaire. People like get that? attached to people's, you know, what I found with multimillionaires and... They're the best people ever. Yeah, like them. And I've had, a, and mm. I still do have a great opportunity to Sorry talk to Sorry to interrupt people. you. Let me go back to that thing to to conclude that. Yeah. Um. Like, let's say you're rich. If you're not wearing those Gucci things, if you're not wearing those flashy stuff, nobody's going to know that you're rich. Yeah. But if you're in shape, everybody will notice. Yeah. You carry that work with you. No matter where you go, yeah, you can yeah. be on the beach. Yeah. Shorts on, short shorts on, yeah. Aussie style. But if you're rich, nobody knows until you say. But there's a there was a thing a thing back back in the days like if you're very jacked, they related that to be dumb. Really be dumb, uh huh. In Brazil, it's especially in Brazil, if you're really jacked, nah, that guy is dumb. Wait until I start speaking. Yeah. So people don't know. But if you're jacked, the first ooh, this guy have some discipline. Which they respect you, they treat you better, and they know you put some work on. But if you're rich, they don't know. What about if you're both? Yeah. Bang. Yeah. And I've also met people that who have got... That is who you <laughs> are. <laughs> I'm kidding. Just don't have the Gucci bag and all the rest no, of it. No, no, the flesh Because I think a, a lot of... Um, I don't like that. I, no, exactly right. And a lot of um, mentors of mine too that have been very, very successful in business are the most unassuming people ever. The what? Sorry, sorry again. They are the most unassuming people these people that wear this stuff yeah that know that are like multi-millionaires to be really successful and a lot of them say the dollars aren't the reflection of their success nah, it's, it's the person who it's they the became person and a hundred percent and one of them a hundred percent um he i asked this from yesterday and he was saying it's like my biggest success is that my kids want to come and hang out with me on my yacht bang and i'm like wow wow one you got a yacht good for you like i was like good for you if you can do it i can do it Second thing is he rated his whole entire success on how connected he felt to his family and how much they still wanted to connect with him. So late 50s guy, young kids that have kids and then, you know, it's like, 
They wanted to come and hang out with me at Christmas. Yacht, no yacht. Holiday house, no holiday house. They wanted to come back and that is a true measure of a success. The dollars... That's great. It's like it's there. It, it helps. The kids don't want do the things. dollars. They don't. They don't want that. They want to experience with you. Yeah. Time. They don't give a f- shit about that, man. Exactly right. Exactly right. So I thought that was very pertinent wow. to his. What a what a yeah shift. He was just like, because I asked him like, what should I really be focusing on? And he's like, you know, you want to have that balance, but he's like, balance is a fallacy. Mm-hmm. It's a blend. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a business owner, the nine to five thing no balance, cut, baby, doesn't cut it. Uh-uh. You know, like you're up at three, you're still working till six. Like you, you got to enjoy you, that. You can take Friday off if you want and go hang out with the family and punch out a couple hours Saturday morning. What? Where are you putting your, the commercial workforce uh, mentality of like factory working, the school system, all the rest of it associated with that, mm. and then bringing that into your entrepreneurial business life? The things don't match, so you should be okay with blending family life. And business life because that's you got to become success. someone better to run on the show. Yeah, become someone sharper to run everything. Yeah. Um, if you could give an advice to people over there that wants to be, they don't need they they work for someone else. If you could give an advice for people that work for for someone else to become an entrepreneur, what would you say in a couple words? Look into that camera and say like an advice that you could give to. To them to become a successful entrepreneur or just to be to become entrepreneur any advice my advice from personal experience would be be disciplined in your personal life on what you're wanting to achieve Bang. that flows through in every single other aspect if you're not disciplined in your personal life and, and simple habits you will never be able to make a business successful you will just buy yourself a job number two Work in a space that you love and enjoy and be passionate, but that is also profitable. A boring business is also profitable. It doesn't have to be the flashy tech company and everything like that. It's whatever makes it work and works for yourself personally and your family and where you want to go. And two, have your reason for doing it. If you want to start a business just to own a business, talk to a business owner first and understand exactly what you're getting into because it's advertised as a dream, but it's a lot of hard work. And at the same time, there's a lot of rewards from it if you can make that happen. And thirdly, be careful who you hang around. Because if you have the wrong people giving you advice, pulling you up or pulling you down, you can be led astray. Surround yourself with like-minded, quality people. Train with quality people like Bruno. Get some discipline in your life and then act and action what you want to get done. Bang. And that by far, if I started that at the start of my first company now into three, soon to be four, I know that this next company that we're starting will be a success. Regardless of the ups and downs, it's not that. And it's not that. Sometimes it's like... Sometimes it's like that for a long period of time. Yeah. Facebook, I think it's 10 years. Facebook ran 10 years pre-revenue, not even profit. Yeah. But they believed. That's um, the thing we were, they believed. We were talking about money, like money doesn't buy happiness. It doesn't. It buys freedom and choice, though. But money doesn't buy any happiness. I had a friend. I came to him making a lot of money. Bro, now I know money doesn't buy happiness. I have a lot of money in my bank account, but I'm not happy, man. I'm blaming my woman for my life to be. I'm blaming people. I'm blaming everything. Why? No purpose. No mission. He doesn't enjoy the journey. Money won't buy happiness if you don't enjoy the journey. You're probably going to have a lot of money back after. And you'll be like, whoa, now I have all this money. But the journey was, you got to enjoy the grind. That's why entrepreneurship, you got to enjoy this grind. Be punching on the face, eating shit. It doesn't okay buy it. happiness, man. He had a lot of money and made me realize that I was in the right path. Yeah. Because I didn't have as much money, but I was happier. I was drive, I had this passion. And he was like, I'm sad. How interesting. How interesting. And gave me a, a punch. Like, I don't need, I need to enjoy the journey and the, mo- the money will be an outcome of this passion, of this, this seed that I'm planting. The interesting thing with that too is you talked about phases before, phases of life. Of phases like, of life. Phases of business too. Phases of business too. For me with phases of family, now yeah, having a, a mm. baby girl, son, wife and all these businesses like my number one focus is being present in the moment 100% of the time bang 
I love that. Bro, and to be honest, if I, I could give an advice for my younger self and for everyone out there to become a better person, to become successful, be fucking present. Yeah. No matter where you're at. Be where your feet, where your feet are. Is that how I say? Yeah. Be fucking present. That's the biggest advice I can give to anyone. And Don't the- stay in your head. Yeah. Don't live in your head. Yeah. And the, most people are like that all day long. The mind is a powerful, powerful unit or tool. If it you, can be used for good things. You can yeah. you can create, you know, hell and heaven or heaven and hell sort of, mm. you know, that sort of paradox. It's, it all comes down to what your mind is doing. And I know it and when, it comes back to training each time, like being present is training with so technique. Powerful. Is so powerful, but super important for super the, from important. a performance point of view. Everywhere, but you take that habit, and then you leave training, and you take that habit into every mm. single day of business, and it has helped me be more present. But being aware of it, sometimes like oh, people can be unpresent. I thought I was present, but if you're not aware of it, to pragmatically it analyze how you are as a person, then you don't understand and you don't realize that. You're not present. Perception. Perception. A great example of, you know, that is when you have kids. You know, you want your children to be behaved and mm. and and act in a way without losing their independence. And you know, sometimes I come home like, oh, this is not not the greatest in, environment of like, come home from work. Um, Kai just wants all my attention, and then it's like this this mismatch in um, in behavior or. You know, like it's just you know how sometimes you know it's not gelling, and other days like you're completely in flow and gelling. I see. I think being a parent is one of the most challenging and most rewarding things ever. It has also been a massive steep learning curve for me. Sometimes harder than business to understand that children, when you talk to them, they're not listening to your words. They're watching what you do, and eighty-three or eighty-four percent of their actions. Hundred percent is a direct reflection oh, of doing, what they're seeing you you've do. You've seen your son imitating you. Yeah, right? and my wife is like, you study so many bu- business books and you have all this passion and drive towards it. Shift a little bit of that attention to how you can communicate to your son or be a better father. And I'm like, you know, like... Oh, that's so true. You know, and so if you're not happy with the outcome it's so as true. a parent or with your team in business, look at yourself because children are... Reflection. Very, very harsh mirror of truth. 100%. Because they're innocent. They don't have any malice intent of how they're behaving. They're behaving how you're behaving like because that's how they learn. Disc. Recording on an empty <laughs> disc. And you know, it's some like blank paper. Honestly, sometimes I'm actually like super upset with myself if I bring business home mm. and it affects him mm. or my daughter 100%. or even my wife. And then other times it's like leaving training. Sometimes I will have that clarity moment the next morning or I, I'll never sleep well if I have a disagreement or anything like that. And then the next morning after training, I'll be like, all right, I've reset myself physically, emotionally, mentally. Forgive. And then I just know, you know, I'm going to give that another crack and I'm re- redo it and all that. Because no one's perfect. And like I'm trying 100% of the time to make the best That's outcome why I don't possible. judge my clients. I don't judge anyone. My life is a mess. Yeah. And no one is perfect, man. You know what? But no one talks about it. I'm worse, I'm worse than you think. Mess. Yeah, everyone wants to feel like it's perfect. No, it's not. Yeah. It's yeah. a mess. And I'm worse than you think. And but then you, I break all your it's expectation. Expectations. Expectations. Expe- yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> but I think that's like, that's super important. It's, it's the self-reflection side yeah. of it. And I think all of that stems back to, it's not about how successful you look on the outside. It's how successful you, you feel. feel yes. within. Which, Focus on feel successful yeah. and not look successful. You, know, you are what you think about. Uh-huh. All day long. Every single day. Every single day. So that's a good We We said, oh, don't stay in your head. If you're going to stay in your head, make sure it's a good place to be. Yeah. Feed your mind. Feed good your thoughts. mind with good things. Yeah. Create a nice garden. Yeah. Build a nice garden. That's if you want to stay there because it's where the, the place you're going to be the most. I think for the, the rest of your life. The biggest thing from that too is you want to have good thoughts around that or well then get some consistency in, in your life. Train, exercise, to, to eat well, mm. prioritize your sleep, get off your phones, there's nothing going on scrolling. Bro, we yeah. don't even have a TV anymore. Like We just like de-technologize as much as possible and come back to the present moment of just 
yourself and people and then that flows on in everything, everything else for me personally. So I really appreciate that, Bruno. Also, last year has been fantastic, man. Fantastic. So much growth, man. Yeah. And since I've been applying, since I left home actually, but changed my life, it blew my mind. Why? New places, new people, new ideas. New ideas, new connections in your brain, new actions, new actions, new results, new life. Yeah. There's people living with the same people for 70 years. It's okay. But if you change that, it'll change your life. You'll change 100%. your life. And I've been doing this on purpose now. I put myself in different situations to meet new people, even though I feel a little bit uncomfortable, but I love people. I love talking to people. And man, your mind just grow and grow and grow. And your soul wants to expand. Your body's lazy. Your body doesn't want to grow. But your soul wants to. What I think is interesting too is that people take for granted what they don't have to pay for. A hundred percent. So coming down 100%. to the come down to the body, like we as humans think that, you know, we can buy whatever, like buying things is the most valuable thing. I need to get money to buy this and buy that. But this? I'm like, try buy your hand. You can't. You can't. Try buy your eyes. No amount of money in the world will be able to give you what you what you were gifted naturally at birth for free. Bang. Your feet. Your feet. No amount of money in the world, if you don't have them, can replace the amount of mobility. It's the big assets you it's have the in your body. It's the biggest asset. You know what? People value more of what they purchase, like then aesthetically, people. Uh-huh. Than, than what you're actually given. The only so thing just, you have is your body, man. Yeah. It's your biggest asset. And you know what? Why don't you invest in that? Exactly. Why don't you spend time on you and invest on you? And here we have all these massive companies trying to develop the ultimate product, the ultimate camera that can get the best resolution that we can just see visually. Mm. We see more than 4K. Mm. And yet we don't... Especially these cameras here. Yeah, exactly right. So you're going to see everything. You know, like, yeah, I think perspective on we have a most invaluable tool, the most valuable thing is our body. We have an incredible mind that not even a supercomputer can actually get to and we're only using 10% of it or thereabouts, which is crazy, right? And so I was like, well, we'll just put that focus back into doing some discipline and sometimes, you know, you may not be happy with the body that you have right now, but you can always change that. It's a phase. You know, it's, I, that I doesn't wasn't define who you are. Exactly right. And so then your whole entire life exponentially improves on so many different levels. James, James yesterday, he asked me, I think I told you, he asked me, oh, what's, your, what's your physical goal for this year? I was like, look as good as possible naked. He was like, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that's a good fair goal. Enough. That's a good goal. Man, if you don't look, if you strip yourself naked, look in the mirror. If you don't look, what you, if you don't like what you see, your levels of confidence is going to drop. Yeah, definitely. You, you, probably most people don't even look at them. Don't yeah. Know. I think when you can get to the point where you should be happy looking at yourself regardless, like mm. from a self-image mm. perspective, but... You can get to the point you where you're it. happy to just like work out without a shirt, go to the beach without a shirt, whatever. And people like misunderstand confidence with arrogance. A lot yeah. of people do. I think people, and I'm one of these <laughs> like who don't work out, who didn't work out consistently in a sh- for that period of time. You look at people them. who are fit and like, oh, that guy. Like, what does he do all day? Yep. Like, does he just sit at the gym all day and all the rest of it? It's funny. Eh? It's just uh, whatever you lack, you put it. Yeah, you 100%. You project on them. Yeah, project, you project what you're lacking. I'm very conscious of that with you know people coming in on either how the companies are going or who i am or what i drive or what i own and all the rest of it it's like well you know like i work my ass off for it and lots of other successful people do too nothing just gets handed to you don't look for a silver pill it's not there so if you're not happy with it don't don't have a graph and like why are you driving that car like or how do you have any more questions because we no that's it um i have a, um, a thing people's always tell me like how do i how do i have so much energy like you like i'm 36 i was fasting right now look at me fast sharp people ask how much you have so much energy quit porn quit uh talking shit about people gossiping yeah junky food stop drinking um soft drinks stop pe- uh, think negative about people and everything and then uh, connect to your spirituality, train, good food, 
no gossip, no porn, no nothing that you're going to spend your energy. No thinking about the past, no thinking about the future, staying present. Man, you have energy. You only have energy for one day. This is a good thing. Whatever you're tired in the morning, say just, just one more day. Just for today. Just today. Only today. One more day. Yeah. That's it. You only have energy for one day. You're thinking about tomorrow, the next day, next day. You're losing the energy here. Yeah. Spending energy over there. Yeah. Use all your energy today to accomplish as many things as you can. Sleep and then tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, it's today again. So there is no tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, it's today. <laughs> yeah. So spend your energy, your time, your mental capacity today, in the moment. Everything you got. Because when tomorrow comes, it's today again. And then when you say, no, I'm going to stop drinking tomorrow. And tomorrow comes and it's today again. Yeah. So I have a, like a code for this. You got to say, I stopped yesterday. Because I stop tomorrow and tomorrow comes and it's a today again. No, keep I stopped going, yesterday. Yeah. yeah. I stopped already. That's pretty and powerful. When you make man. a decision, huh? That's pretty powerful. That's crazy, eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing, the la- like as we close out, the last thing that uh, has helped massively when training, because sometimes during training and, and our whole entire journey can be hard, right? In the moment. You meant to. This little mantra that sometimes I say as we're, as we're doing the reps is like, this is easy. This is simple. This is simple. This is fun. And I'm choosing to do it. Sometimes though, Bruno, like you, you say like three more, like nine times <laughs> from a counting perspective. And to be honest. Because you know that there's something else there. you can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh. But yeah, it, it's a good journey. And I really appreciate it too, man. Like my tri- my life Thank is you. just expanded ah, exponentially on that front as well. It's just good to have consistency. And I notice when I don't work out, How my bad. life feels yeah, less. Less, yeah. less energetic. People think, no, nah, I'm going to work out in the morning. I'm gonna, not, not going to have energy. It's the opposite. You recharge yourself. 100%. And like you said, work more on yourself if you want to be an entrepreneur. Work more hard on yourself than you do on your job. Yeah. You're doing the opposite. You're doing the other way around. Yeah. That's why you don't grow in life. Exactly, man. Do the other. And people think, ah, I'm in this situation right now. This is the situation you deserve to be in. To be, to be better than that, to have more, to have a better car, a better house, you got to become more. So don't worry about, ah, I'm doing this. Blame yourself, man. Yeah. It's me. Whatever I have right now in my life, all the cars, the house, the gym, is that that big? But it's because I am that big. If I want to be bigger, if I want to bigger things, I have to become more and become bigger. Yeah. And sometimes it's working working through that problem. Mm. And there's a good thing that my, them. And my brother always says it too. He's like, you know what? The stoic way, the stoic principle is like the I only like way that. is through. The only way is through. The only way is true. So you can run away from a problem. Choose your heart. Do you want to deal with the problem or do you want to deal with the other part Every of the problem? Every time you deal with the problem, you boop, boost yeah. your self-confidence. And it's done. Hey, I did that. It's all good. And this is why you can like notice like entrepreneurs, they're different. They all walk different because they've been so <laughs> punched in the face so many times. So many eating shit, like solving problems all day long, every day, every single day. Yeah. And they walk different because they have confidence. And they have purpose. They have purpose. They love the mission. Oh, I love it, man. So enjoy the mission. Enjoy the journey. And if you want to grow muscles, go slow <laughs> and hold two seconds. Stretch the muscles. Secret to, to build your muscles. To love it. Good. You, want, you reckon you rap? Yeah, rap man. It up? Love catching up. It's been good. We'll talk again, though. We'll do it for sure. <sighs> Bring more people in. Bring Julio de la Fitch. 100%. That love guy. It, oh, ah, another thing. I asked, uh, I went to Julio's uh, birthday. Julio is a billionaire. If you don't know, Julie is a multimillionaire. I went to his birthday, né? and I asked her, his secretary. Is that how I say? Yeah. I asked her, his secretary, <laughs> and I was like, what do you think about Julio? One word to describe Julio. She said, crazy. We said the same. Yeah. People think I'm crazy. People think you're crazy. Yeah. But I realized that most successful people, they people think they're crazy. Yeah. But crazy people with results, they're genius. Mm-hmm. But crazy people with no results, fool. Fool. Unless they're working towards the results. Bang. But 100%. They think I'm crazy. Uh, Julius said, do you know that song? You think I'm crazy. That's his song. So thank you, Julius de la Fitch, for being crazy. Keep being crazy. That's awesome, so, man. Be crazy. Be crazy being in you. Love it, man. Love it. Good to see you again. Oh, I can talk here all day long. 
Same, man. Same. Until next time. Tomorrow With this morning. Coffee, eh? See. You. you still fasting? Still fasting. What are you up to now? I'm going to go to three back to back meetings and then I'll have something. Three back to back? Yeah. Then I'll have something. How long, how long is the meeting for? Uh, I don't 15 minutes, 30 minutes each? Yeah, max 30 minutes. Tops. Max 30 yeah. minutes? There's one 45 minute one. In person? In person. In person. Always in person. Yeah. Always as much, in person. As much as possible. As much as possible. No phone, no uh, Zoom calls. What I found is like the English language is only really being, it's a new thing in history. Everyone, like generations, has really communicated with body language. Now you think about people that didn't have like the articulation of language. They grunt, they groan, they motion, they use body language, and that's how they would communicate. Look at horses. Great 100%. example, man. 100%. Having horses on the farm, psychologist horses, there's personality, how they even just move their shoulder, their ears, their mane, all signals something directly that 100%. speaks a thousand words. So that's why you like in person? I like in person. Because you read the person? Yeah. I'm very, very avid study of body language. I want to understand who I'm dealing with. I want them to know that I'm genuine, confident, and will deliver on what mm. I'm going to say you're going to do, and I expect the same thing back. So I like in person meetings. All right, let's wrap it. Cool, man. That was very good. Eh? That was very deep psychological mindset things. Good value that's, all around. Uh huh. We, br- we brought value. Yeah. That's all, all about me. I want to bring me as much value as I can. 100%. Cool, man. Let's go.